playing gym that is like we just moved to a new house and we met so many cool guys so I really want to get to know Jelly, we Jelly Jelly of the Cube really want to get to know them better. So let's continue. And let me move my face over there. Good. Oh yes. So we were we had a meeting, we, we are about to have a meeting with uh, Mr. Vega, who is the English teacher of our daughter, my daughter. So, let's see. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student's desk in the back. I might get stuck in this. Ah. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Ah. The whole class erupts in laughter. Um. Alright, alright everybody, very funny Colin, please sit down. Thank you. It's high ah. school? Is it really high school? Wow. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Sweet man, Shago! Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbooks. Nobody's listening. Oh, uh, not I guess. Well, it has some authority issue as a teacher. Wow. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighed. Mm. Middle schoolers, right? Oh, okay, it's middle school. Because I was like, high school, really? Don't you teach high schoolers? Eh. Both. You know, budget gets right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Please call me Hugo. Eh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda is a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? <sighs> Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Ooh, what's happening? I really wonder. I really wonder. Uh. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved, she's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Maybe we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Mm -hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, mm -hmm. I know how important art school is to her and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Oh. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Ah. Yes? They ever catch that rye? Hmm? <laughs> That's a good joke. I like it. It's a good one. Salinger joke. Ha! 
of course we pick the interest because it's a good joke yes <laughs> I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me she's always been such a force for positivity in my life especially after we lost her father Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on okay. hmm I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossip about our celebrity crushes. That's a good answer. So, you talked about Maria Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Ah. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Let's go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Mm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Mm. Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Think it up. Sounds like a deal to me. Yeah. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway. What I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? It was a very long conversation. You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, pops. Seniorities and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Hmm. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just... I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. <sighs> I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Hmm... I heard in my arms going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the summer school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. <laughs> What's so funny? Ah. Um, it's a... Uh, I, I don't think you would get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Mm -hmm. Nah. Oh, who is Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? <sighs> yep. Do you like Noah? Ah. What? No. Dad. Ugh, I cannot believe you would. Dad. Dad. I mean, jeez. What would you. Ugh. Gross. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad is just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. I love you, kiddo. <laughs> she leans forward, forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the more than... Wow, not well done. <laughs> we arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a small security guard from yelling at a group of low throwing teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah! 
language. We see, heck yeah, better. We approach the food court and evaluate the options. This greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menu. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in, what are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? <laughs> I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Huh. Yeah, she takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. <laughs> we order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig huh? in. These are bad, these are very bad, but also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, hmm. something been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Hmm. Ah, which meme? All, all memes. <laughs> this dad is so out of the loop. Ugh. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hand. Ugh. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, dad, all you, all us youth have already be done the job to death. Dad. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme trend, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the man will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh, shit, what up? <gasps> Dad, please. Ah. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Huh? What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movement of the 70s and 80s? Hmm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda runs into the stall with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the bike. Right. There it is, you can still see the outline kinda. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Yes. Speech, 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 speech. All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic movement that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Anne of the Cube had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the uh. mall. After begging her father to take her to dead, goth and beyond, to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Rappers merchandise. <laughs> her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise which to this day remains among our possession. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's a memory. <laughs> Amanda is moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Right. Oh hey, chain wallets. What Amanda busies, 
busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for that to look at in a death garden beyond. Wow, what am I going to look at? Shirts, mugs, or hot deals? Maybe some shirts. I barely know any of these bands. Cannibal Born Party doesn't seem like music I enjoy. But they must be really happy that a retail outlet is carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are really proud of them. It's becoming so cheesy this part, like really like boomer cheesy, you know? Oh, someone new. <laughs> Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled stifled? A stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bald looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Oh my! Listen, when I bought this online, the website that this blues was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Oh, oh I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The dialogue are very, very strange in this part of the game, like... I'm a little bit confused. The man wheels around and storms out, his literal coattail trailing behind him. I can tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh. Hey, Datron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy, thanks! Alice is only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt into the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair! Ah. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So, what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolled her eyes so hard, I'm worried she will fool something. <laughs> These jokes are not funny at all. That's that's them. That's Damien. Damien, Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands him under her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We walk our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool! Long haul paranormal ice road ghost trucker is on! Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes! They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also the hunting ghost. Hmm. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but is one of the best. Colin and Flynn Dogborn, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril, 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 yet. Oh no, the ghost Don, the ghost Don got control of the truck. I cannot stay on them, the damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. <gasps> Almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. Mm. That's because we're about to die, you. Ah. This is odd. 
The episode ends and Amalai excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Wow, that was bad. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploit of Column and Flint Dogborn after this disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Well, that was some kind of writing. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes? You have never ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We want to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Yeah. So, you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, if there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to Polly. Yeah, those are bad. Wow, they're very. They're, they're very pushy with what they eat. With what everyone eats. Which means they are more for me. <laughs> Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Eh? Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Yeah. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda rel re reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Mm -hmm. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Hmm. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! Oh my god, I forgot who it was him. It was very nice. I'm happy we're visiting him. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my Hi. eldest. Hi. Oh. This is Christian and Christy, the twins. Hey. They stay scrupulously and say nothing. Oh. Then, of course, they are youngest, Chris. Wait, where is Chris? Maybe Mary puts him in his crib. Oh, no. <gasps> It's the woman from the bar the other night? Really? Really? What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hey. Joseph picks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ha, ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Chris to bed? Ah. Hmm. I'll have to go look for him. What? You will have to... Oh. <laughs> Joseph takes a moment then regain his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Jelly, and his daughter, Amanda. Huh? I would shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to um, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Oh my gosh, she might live a double life. 
Maria leaves. Oh god, this is awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows and Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I meet around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick up some devolved eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins peeling it with baked good. Oh, I don't have to make oh. friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you gonna party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do please, please entries. Huh. Dad. Hmm. They're gonna talk about weather. <sighs> go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well. Here's girls nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in dead, goth and beyond? And Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Wow. Oh. Okay, Joseph and Damien, Joseph is the host, Damien is the person at the shop, Matt, Hugo and Craig, Matt is the coffee owner, Hugo is the teacher and Craig is the college friend and Robert and Brian, I don't remember them, I'm gonna talk to them. Hmm. <laughs> That's a good team. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two odd movements like that. Dream Daddy again, love it. And hello, I liked Matt, Hugo and Craig. Right, they were very nice. Like we just, like, you really didn't miss anything interesting. It was actually some kind of bad writing that you just missed. Like, we, I went to talk to Mr. Vega, who is on the right, who is uh, Amanda's English teacher. And he told me that Amanda has been just like uh, not passing in assignment and kind of just like not working as much as usual. So he was, he was starting to be worried. So I talked to Amanda, but she didn't tell me anything. And we went to the mall and we ate nachos and we went to a goth shop and we met a guy who likes wearing Victorian clothes and we kind of went home and now we are at a barbecue. And that's pretty much it. It was like half an hour just for just the mall pretty much. But I think those three ones are my favorite. Matt, Hugo and Craig, it's a Hugo, right? You pronounce the H. So let's see what we have. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because there's a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Well, it's a bit it's said very complicated, but I cannot agree actually. <laughs> you 
You cannot really compare to art period. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Hmm. Do we talk to Craig? Or do we listen in on Matt and Hugo? Matt made a delish cake. What? How do you know that? Let's talk to Craig, okay. But how do you know that Matt made a delish cake? Did I miss a line that I didn't read? <laughs> He'd just be feeling left out. Hmm, I, I tip it right. I think like, I think it's it just like, Matt and Hugo are very passionate about art, so let's help Craig a little bit. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little bit more attentive to my existence. How how would resistance training go the how how did resistance training go the other day? Great, Little River here is a great cheerleader, and you, tiny bro. Craig grabs River's arm and waves them around. You can do it, Dad! I'm so proud of you! I'm sorry for pooping on you! Dang. <laughs> She must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arm again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad! <laughs> How are you settling in? How are we sitting in? But you all out there. Mad made banana cake in the cafe first episode. It's true, yes. But I, okay, that's for sure. I remember that. And we called it. Do you remember how we called the cake? Actually, it was like. Surprising something cake? I something like this. But yeah, but I thought you were talking like at the barbecue that he made a cake. I was like, what? I missed that part. <laughs> Okay, how are we settling? I think... I think almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Nice. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Thanks, student life. It's true. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating a spoonful of French dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. <laughs> She still does though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Jelly, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice, everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. <laughs> Ranch dressing, I really dislike this. <laughs> like you really made like the sickest emoji face you could find. <laughs> I, you know, interestingly, for most of my life, I hate rain dressing. Like I would never put sauce on any salad. I would always like salad with that sauce because I always feel like there was either too much or it would just ruin the taste of the veggie. I could not, I could no longer taste any taste of any veggie. So I was just like, no sauce, please, no sauce, please. But somehow, recently, I tried some. And especially when they are made with mustard, it's actually quite good. So, but I think like as, as I reach 30 maybe, my tastes have changed. Like I like, my tastes have really changed. Like before I couldn't, there's a lot of things I didn't like. But now I'm good. I even like spicy food now, if you want to know. <laughs> but it's interesting like how tastes change. Like compared like early 20s to now in my 30s, it's so different. So different. But Maybe I became less turban or so, and I decided to try something new that maybe 10 years ago I didn't like, but I'm, I was like, maybe I could give it another try, you know? Anyway, for this ranch dressing conversation. So who is a girl who is, who is jogging over to us? Hey, 
What is it, sweetheart? Oh, it's Matt's daughter. She has such cool style. Dang, I love it. It's a flower crown. I thought you would look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Ha! Hmm. Oh, am I cool now? It looks quite cool, actually. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm, none. But you sign in this uncool that you were before you put it on. Hey! Hey! Ha! Hey, Jelly! This is my daughter. Hello! I am Kamensida. Huh. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually? Yeah, actually. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, well, your teacher. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize you, we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term pepper? Ha ha ha. Great seeing you. It's kind of awkward, very awkward to see teachers at a party. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She let the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. <laughs> very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Luco, Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wild. Huh? Ernest! Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nap! I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a girder. Mm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. That's some drama. Wow. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy, envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shop a sparkler down Joseph Spence. Nearly burned down half the yard. Oh my god, that's some behavior. Mm. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. Oh my god, there's some real, real behavioral issue here. Wow, right? Yeah, bad kid, we're just like, there is some issue, there is like, there is some conversation and maybe a therapist a little bit involved here, I think, to burn twice someone's garden. Is that it? and there are guests of show over there? It's not even their own place, so wow. And then it spread in onto my lawn and burn half of my yard too. Like, what's happening here? <laughs> wow! Can someone help this kid? Wow. I don't know. Wow. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Anna's behind him. Hmm. Hey everybody, sorry about that. Jelly, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey, nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Hmm? Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Ugh, yeah, good for you. Oh. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to all dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. Eh. Ernest. Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest put headbirds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... 
That was certainly something. Wow. That's kind that's some attitude. And some rudeness. And some trouble. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hand and thighs. Hmm. I'm so sorry if he's having a really tough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad and he clearly resents me for it. Hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher that's about so <laughs> that's a that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly? Are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. To be cool as a cucumber. Dang. Jelly. Jelly the cool cucumber. You know? Hey. See, that right there. You cannot say that. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I am... Um, I don't know. Maybe Craig has small kids, so it's easier when you have small kids. Oh. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raked against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Socks with sandals. Well, by the way, it became cool again to wear socks with sandals, so you're fine, Matt. You're good. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still, she still thinks I'm cool. Don't play it. Don't play it. Me versus them, Jale. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? <laughs> Amanda just laughs, she keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh, no. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. You got the point. We cannot all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work, I mean, Look at me in earnest. Hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. But it would be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Oh. It's interesting to have a game when you can have like that conversation. I feel like it's so, 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 so rare. And it's good to talk about this, like being cool dad, being good dad, like the change, like what it is to raise teenagers, small kids, like the expectation and everything. It's, I like that, it's cool. We should see more positive dad's representation in general in games it's clearly clearly missing anyway here you go don't let us eat up your time jale go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood yeah let's do it okay now i want to talk to joseph and damien joseph the host damien is a new person we just recently met I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Death, Dead, Goth and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Oh. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Hmm. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood and it complements the crimson interior Perfectly. Uh. It's definitely an interesting choice. Oh. Thank you. I am very proud of my abode. <laughs> Jelly, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. 
Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Mm. How do you do? Mm, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I, 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 I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the ghost lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. They are very different, but I like that. I like that they, um, they casted, they created such a diverse, diverse range of characters. I really like it. It's good. It is good. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. Yeah, he was kind of like, he kind of did a, a little bit of a tantrum in the shop. You missed it, but it was a tantrum. <laughs> it's, it's okay, man. Hmm. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to death, goth and beyond. Hmm. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the ghost lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Oh my! Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? <laughs> Cool guy, cool dad, 100%. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific lab label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leaning. Okay. Bats are cool though. Uh. <laughs> How oh, pity. Are you entering the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Oh. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does it count as Gus? Ah. That it would, it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Blood March, at your service. Damien finishes a sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Huh. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. <laughs> My, do you know how to treat a lady? Huh? Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin appear. Um, are they speaking in unison? So, Joseph has four kids. We, we met just very briefly the older kids. Then we have two I mean, twins. And then there was a baby and we didn't see the baby. And the twin, so far, they only have been very silent and staring at us. Very. Very intensely. So, let's see what's gonna happen now. What? Uh, hey, won't you come play with mm. us? Um, come play with us forever, yeah. guys. And now with the creepy twin stick, we've talked about this. Eh? Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Hmm. Mary popped into the conversation, wine in hand. Also, there is some drama because on the last episode, we went to the pub and as soon as we entered the pub, Mary, who we see right now, she, tried, she started hitting on us just to get a free drink. And as soon as we say no, she just like went to 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 hit on the next new customer, but actually Mary is Joseph's wife. 
So that is some kind of drama right now. So when we first introduced each other, it was kind of awkward, and she excused herself very quickly <laughs> out of the conversation. She was rude. Yeah, she was just like she was just rude to. She even called us like fresh meat or something like very very like not proper and she just wanted a free drink so it was very just like tacky you know so but now she's a neighbor and the wife of, of our friend so let's see what's going to happen from this huh. i um don't know mary takes a long sip of the oh. wine I think I may have tapped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Oh. Where's Krish? Krish is the youngest um, kid. Give it a rest, buddy. Wasn't he with you? You had him a moment ago. Mm. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He will be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Oh my gosh, she's just like, no one is taking care of this baby. Wow. Mary tips her glass to me. Mm. And my first time to the rodeo. It's my fault. I have squeezed for little. Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Oh my god. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Mary? Mm. Okay, cheers. Wow, there is some deep, 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 deep underlying issues here. In just one conversation, you can tell a lot. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Oh, we saw this kid. He was the one who... Oh. He's at the same school as Amanda, and when we were lost and we were trying to find uh, Mr. Vega's classroom, he guided us to the complete, complete different direction. So it was kind of rude to us. So, another rude person. Huh. Ha, Lucien, have I introduced you to Jale yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his held elders. Be polite. Lucien bows. Whatever, sir. Lucien bows again. Mr. Christensen. May I have a veggie burger, sir? Coming, right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described themselves. Hmm. Actually, they described carnivorous type people as blood lapers. Dad, hey. that's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns his grill. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeves. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Yeah, Joseph doesn't seem to be the kind of guy who's tattoo, but it's just a fake guess to... You can never know who's gonna have a tattoo or not, so... Wow! Is that a tattoo? <laughs> yep! <laughs> I wasn't always a used pastor, you know? That's so cool! Wanna see mine? What? What? That's a big reveal for the dad. Lucien pulls back some rubber bracelet, revealing a loop sided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and pork tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucien! We'll, we'll talk about this later. That's pretty cool. What is the significance of the tattoo? I... Uh, I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Mm. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because 
You want one. Careful though. That number carries weight. Man. Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastor popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. I wonder as well. I want to know more of the backstory. Okay, let's talk to Robert and Brian because I don't remember who they are. Oh. Uh, no. Can I undo my choice? Robert? Not really. Brian? Not really. I glanced across the yard and noticed Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one-upped by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian waves me over. Right? Even my character is second-guessing my choice to talk to them as well. We both agree. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey guys! Uh -huh. Jolly! <laughs> How the heck are you? Setting into the neighborhood, right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. Oh. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 in there. The game looks great in high def. Uh, okay. I don't really care, but let's let's be social. Aww. Oh boy. Jelly, have you met Robert yet? We did. We did. Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Aww. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. That sounds nice, actually. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Evan caught her first fish. But can you stop praising? I mean, but if he goes to like praising his kids over and over again, I'm gonna be like, really? <laughs> it's good to see you talking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. <laughs> and it's great that she loved the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside making art she won a local competition for that art yep and i don't have to go to the competition side of the conversation again why am i going to the competitive part again <sighs> i don't know did i put it on too strongly yes you did robert stars at me blankly for a second hey. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years, not since the last time. Sammy here, well, things change once you have kids. Wait, what happened the last time? He's a storyteller. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. And you thought Brian was gonna be the one to show off about his daughter. It's Jale, right? Right, I. I think Jale is starting to feel insecure or just like went to all patterns and then we stuck. But now we're gonna have a possibly interesting story from Robert. So let's see. Well, all Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid, met, met I'm in my army days comes from Kansas. They build them tougher out there. This is very hard for me to, to read this way. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankles. Ooh, ooh. When the rope bridge snaps. Ooh, that's, it could have died. <sighs> you could see the bone popping out through the skin. Oh my God, if we're in a barbecue, we're gonna eat. And now we have the vision of a bone popping out throughout the skin. Thank you. Johnny boy is screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We are two days out from the next living soul and here I am with my dear friend 
bleeding out in front of me. Wow, that's that's difficult. <laughs> oh my god, I am able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot. 180 pound men over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. Wow, that was tough. I won't lie to you, there were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms. Like, can you imagine, like, wow, carrying an adult? on your back for two days in the mount on the mountain pretty much wow they must have slept for three days after that and that bond never breaks i got that boy back to civilization but i lost some of me out there i guess that's camping for you yeah right i don't think you would ever go camping ever again brian and i stay in disbelief Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went in a tubing down the river and he left a flip flop. Miss that kid. Okay, so he just wanted to be center of a, the center of attention with a very bloody story. Ah. <laughs> wow. Uh. Super. Oh, am I kidding? Okay, the joke is over. Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. Oh my god, you're not funny. Wow. Phew, Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghosts lock the doors. Quick! Hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. How oh, then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghost, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. <laughs> that's called that's called blooded I like that they are in their own imagine imagination storytelling but it was a nice a nice cut from the weird story from Robert Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. <laughs> you know. Oh my god, Robert again. No, no, no. That reminds me of the last time I went skiing. I don't want to know. Robert, wait a second. Are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. Thank you for interrupting Robert's. Sorry, I appreciate that. Amanda and I love that show. Oh. It's the best, especially that episode where Colum hides Flynn keys and Flynn retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. We're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep, us, gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But, but there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Huh. Live a little. Hmm. I never like, ever, 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 ever like people saying live a little. It's rude. It's just rude. And judgmental. I'm glad Jale and Brian have a shared interest. 
But that show sounds like trash TV. I'm Reese Robert on this one. I think, I mean, I think they just enjoy it for just like to, to spend some good time just to laugh. I'm kind of fine with that, you know, some, I mean, I, I can enjoy my reality TV show when it's just like after a long day, you know, something very silly. So I'm actually with Jale and Brian on this, but everyone has their own interest and I'm happy about that. <laughs> Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find Kindling for fire. Yes. Okay, but not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend. All right. Now you're getting it. Well, I'm happy Amanda is making a friend though, very quickly. Daisy and Amanda ran off. What a cute couple of kids. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. Oh my god, this is such a good news. That's wonderful. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Especially if, if she's more mature, it makes sense. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Yeah, I feel like he was less into competition and more about like talking about things he likes, so, which is very nice. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. That's rough. For her. That's rough, my. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bite people too. <laughs> oh, kids, right? Dang, the biter. That's something. The biter. God, I love them. You are required to buy low. I hear that. <laughs> well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them? They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishment is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Ah. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Mm. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets pot patties, patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. <laughs> you guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? <laughs> He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. Then this is my first description of how to make steaks. Can we just move a little bit faster than that? I know how it works. Everyone knows how it works. But maybe it's just like for the show. Maybe it's for the attention, so. One after another, the dads take notice, haha, and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. So that was for the show. Mm. You probably didn't know this, Jelly, but Joseph known around here for his grillmanship. Uh. He's ungrillable. <laughs> hey. I've tried to get on his level. But I just can't catch up. Ha ha ha. Oh my god. Boomer joke one after the other. That's serious. Oh. <laughs> Let us keep studying. Ha ha. He has a rare quality about him. Uh, Merstad, we keep talking about this. Can we just appreciate the artist? I, I'm gonna have to make a joke, right? I've never seen him make a mistake, ha <laughs> mm. 
Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Please stop. <laughs> Teen getting annoyed at Boomer's dogs. All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Yeah. All right, guys, the food's ready. I didn't, I didn't say a joke though. I wanted to say a joke. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. That makes me want to eat cheeseburgers. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kinda nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. So Matt is a single dad. Okay. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Hmm? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. Or maybe they were referring to me, actually. Maybe Matt is not a single dad. Hmm. If she decide to get into the babysitting game, she will really make a killing. Oh. Hey, why don't you add us all on dad book? Dad book? Is it Facebook for dad? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. That's cool. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Ah. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, pops, I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up the fight between Calamancita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Okay. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Yeah, it was fun. I think actually just like, it was actually cool to see everyone uh, personality a bit better. And I think to know a little bit more uh, that Brian is actually not a rude guy. So it was kind of nice. Just Robert went a little bit further, further from me, which is probably for the better. But it was kind of good to know everybody a bit better. Okay, what do we say? I mean, I got a burger in me. I feel like I was at a networking event. Wish I could have been playing Paranormal Ice Road Trucker. <laughs> That's funny. What do we say? I think I had a good time. The food was probably great. Mm. I feel like the one is like, I'm on, I was only there for the food. It felt boring and like a networking event. And I wish I could have played with the kids instead. So I feel like they all sound kind of negative. So I'm kind of not sure. So I'm just gonna talk about the food. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, and not that this was a bad situation, but if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. What? The silver lining gets you through to the other side. We ate rocking burgs today and it was good. I have no idea. I have no idea what I just said. What I what does it mean by the silver linings get you through to the other side? What is that supposed to mean? I have no idea. Amen. Mm. Well, hey, at least you meet some other cool dads. You should hit them up on that book. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. Hmm. I have a good feeling about this place. Well, I'm glad Amanda is settling in quite well. Me too, dad. Hmm, oh. I have a chapter. What's next? I don't know. 
I don't think I ever work. Maybe I took like a full two week of vacation to move and stuff, which could be kind of nice. Because I don't think I ever go to work ever or work from home. Maybe you do. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Ah. Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course, just, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Uh -huh. You got it. And be careful, I will. Make good choices, oh. of course. And call me if you need anything. Huh. Dad, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? 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 No. <laughs> I've never done that and I will never do that. Mm. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I am... Um, my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Hmm. What are we going to do? Work on some stuff, see how long I can sleep for, or throw a party. Well, I've been socializing all afternoon for the barbecue, so I find having some stuff for myself. So I'm not gonna throw a party. Mm, I might just work on some side project of my choice. You know, that stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Ah. Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potato. I love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I would use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Sometimes going inside of jealous mind is weird. Just saying. Oh my god, it keeps going. That's long. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. Oh, wow. I lost, I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she will respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better, better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little bit late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. Yeah, go for it. Hmm. I check my watch again and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. The classic worry of a parent. Okay. See, now I am worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no. It's too soon for that. She's probably driving. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman Midhal are not only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yellings. So I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Yeah, just go watch something way more calming. We better. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends for number? Yeah, you should know actually some of her friends for number, at least one. 
why don't I even know any of a friend's full name? You need to ask this question as well. Who is Emma P? I decided to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I cannot help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. That's stressful. That's very stressful actually. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opened the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. So she must have arrived at like 2045 or something like this, but it was stressful for him, I understand. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Aww. Huh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of the pocket. Oh. oh, whoops, guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Hmm? Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and that, that's actually quite late, yeah. And you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. <gasps> Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I was scared. And I don't like your attitude. And I have a right to be concerned. What do I say? They're both fine. I was scared. You were, you were not responding and it was just... It was just like when you died. Oh no, don't bring that. Don't bring that. I have to stop myself from chewing up. Oh, dad, I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Uh. Uh. All right, I'm going to go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez, as I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled egg for Amanda as a piece uh. of ring. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, Aww. I thought about what you said last hmm. night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think hmm. about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well, if they have good communication skills after it, so it's good. Well, I trust you to make good choices. I also thought about it and I'll try to give you s your space from here on out. I gotta trust that you can take care of mm. yourself. Team of the cube? Team of the cube. Yeah. And Mona gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it! Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did! Yeah. Bless you! Oh, it's good that they are chewing again and like they're doing better. It's better, like, it's better this way. Amanda scuffs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Ah. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later! Wait, one more thing before you go. Mm. What? What's that book? Oh. It's a social media platform. Wait, mm. what? What's a social media platform? <laughs> Dad, I have to go to school. You can call it. You can call it, Dad. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I cannot put together a dad book profile on my own. Mm. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Dad. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which, as it turns out, is a place where dad can get together and talk about fatherhood. <sighs> All right, pups, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. 
Oh my god, I'm gonna do it. Oh, this is fun. That book, it's time for that book. Hmm. Who am I? Who is Jale? Who is Jale of the Cube? Interesting question, no? Interesting question. On the Friday night, you are most likely to. Wow. Polish and sort my coin collection. Netflix and grill, baby. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. Tom on my children with dad puns. Or sink into bliss, blissful oblivion. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we already said that we watch History Channel. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with History Channel. If you had one thing to take with you onto this desert island, what would it be? What would it be? My trusty grill. Ah, the lost shaker of salt. Ah. Castaway of DVD for introduction purpose. Ah. A boat, obviously. Yes. I don't need anything. My survival skill have trained me for this day. Let's get a boat. What are you turns on? Turn ons. Oh my god, that's interesting. Jelly. Jelly, what do you like? Strong down arms. Tennis shoe with long white socks. A well manicured loan. Street smarts. Top tier grillmanship, comfortable with crying. Oh, this is so interesting. Those are good questions, actually. And I would say comfortable with showing emotion, so comfortable with crying. Good communication skills. What did you want to be when you grew up? Jale? Technical writer for manuals and instructionals. Salty boat captain. Pro skater who is also an astronaut. A good father. The president of space. Who is Jale? I think it's Jale. We don't really know a lot about Jale. We know that he is very close to his daughter Amanda, but we don't really know a lot about about career, you know? Like I'm not very sure who Jelly is. I guess I can be more specific right now, but when you grew up, they kind of not that interesting. I will remove. Sorry, boat captain. I don't know. Who is Jelly? I think Jale is a simple person. Can I be a good father? The president of space would be just like for the pun, for the dad book. It's, so it's for that book, so it's also like what you show. Hmm. Hmm. What's your favorite movie genre? War documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, or comedy that haven't aged well. Let's go for romantic comedies. What's your ideal date? Napping together, doing a 1000 piece puzzle together, Eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m., trying to shield cash but getting hopelessly lost. That seems fun. Arson, don't know what it is. Being emotionally vulnerable, so having a long conversation. I'm gonna go for the geocache. What did you never leave home without? A cardigan? A vape? A book? A knife? 
Oh, my crumpling self is low self-esteem, that's sad. I frequently forgot my phone keys and wallet at home sometimes. Hmm, what do I get? I don't know. This is difficult. Hmm, I'm gonna get a cardigan. I spent a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. How proud I am of my child, potentially end of the world, if I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. When I can next get a cup of coffee. Low moral modifications. <laughs> this is funny. I think as a dad I think a lot about Amanda actually. Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profile. It's fun, I agree. Right. You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I will make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Mm. Go get them, dad. That's good. Welcome. You got dads. Oh. Hi, Jale. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Menda. I'm delighted to see you've signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why, Jale? I, I never. We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though so, I am of course flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. <laughs> Amanda, you know, I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait, no. Whoa. <gasps> Was it supposed to be a secret before? Dad book is sounding less like a social media site where dads can talk about fatherhood than it is a dating site with these questions. It's completely a dating site. Completely. But that's fun. I like it. I mean, it's kind of the game we're playing right now, right? Oh my god, the big reveal is I haven't finished my degree. Big reveal. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. It's gonna be a leverage for so many other things now. It was, I was, I was, I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard, hard and ate all my vegetables. <laughs> totally holding on to this for later for sure. For sure, I man, you should. It's a, it's a great reveal. <laughs> Wait, do you even remember what I made in? Yeah, I want to know what you're doing. No idea. I decline to comment. <laughs> cool. Conversation ending. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to choose later, like my career and my major, because right now. I don't think I rock. I think I'm just back on vacation. So, okay. Well, Nasenik, who do we talk to? Craig, Matt, Brian, Robert, Damien, Hugo, or Joseph? What do you think? I think, we, I mean, we're mostly going to talk to everybody. Maybe not actually, maybe like to our favorite three. But who do we talk to first? What do you think? No, no special request? Okay, let's talk to Matt. 
always Craig, the cool active dad. Plus, Craig, Craig is a pretty cool name, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, let, let me go back then. Let's go to Craig. That's true, he is cool active. It's true. And he's very nice and he seems to be a love his daughter, so it's very sweet. Craig Ken. Dad of three, business entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast. Enthusiast. Juggling work, family and fitness is a tough gig, but someone's gonna do it. Okay, what is what do you decide? On a Friday on a Friday night, what do you do? Get one last good cardio session in. That's true, you kind of beefy. Desert Island, a box of energy bars. Mm -hmm. Get some food, it's true. Turns on a sub six minute mile. When you grow up, you wanted to be a B Pong world champion. Favorite movie, Buddy Cup movies forever. An ideal date, scaling a huge, dangerous mountain for fun. Never leave home without some energy gel. And thinking about my mild time used to be so good. What happened? Have I picked? Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot about working out. I'm gonna say it's obsessive, but it's a lot. Okay, but it's healthy until it becomes unhealthy. So let's see. Oh, I can give some love. It's like, oh, how much I can do it. Let's message. Oh, oh, I just changed like this. Oh, we, we left, we left that, that book. I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate to Craig's that book page and type out a message. Hey bro, or should I say never? Let's catch up like old times. A couple moments pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it's, it will still be fun. I think for a moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to pray for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on, on the door. Yo, Manda Panda! <laughs> Manda Panda is a funny nickname. I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece, but her eyes are a little bit puffy. Almost as she has been crying. She did she did cry before. Hey, are you alright? Oh, oh yes, I'm fine. I, I just got sad because I realized that dogs are too often killed off in movies to elicit emotional reaction from the audience instead of being given the respect that they deserve. It's not right. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want to know that I'm here for you. I just want you to know that I'm here for you. And I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Yeah. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I am unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. What you're working on? Just a collage for class. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goal for the future. I take a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. Ah. It's mostly dogs, yeah. You do need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Wanna go? Oh. 
remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you bought me all the gear and then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball toward me and I just ran off of the field crying. And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up. Yes. Mm. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic sentient softball. She does look unwell. I wish you could talk to me. I wish like I wish I could have pushed a little bit more the conversation. Like I'm talking, I don't know, about something to relate and just I feel like Jelly ask one question and if there is no answer just move to something else and I think there is a reason to persevere here but hmm. So does that mean you don't want to go? Amanda gets up and looks me dead in the eyes, determined. Ugh. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. Good job. But I wonder what's bothering her so much though. Amanda and I make the short drive out to the local softball field. For kids of ball camp, it's pretty packed. We clamber up the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I don't see Craig anywhere. Dad. So, when do the kids start crying and running off of the field? You know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids crying, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. You just came for the show. Huh. For nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. Not even a little bit, darling. Hmm. <laughs> Definitely not that. The game starts and the kids run out into the field. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He has reverse stripe to his chest. As per usual, there's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's the mascot? Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's a ma Maple Bay Flapjacks, again the Pinewood Oslo. Go Flapjacks! Hi. Chuck up on that bat, Miranda. Chuck up on the bat, Miranda. Yeah, Miranda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Oh my god, I... Hey, I gotta go to sleep, work tomorrow. Thanks for streaming, enjoy the softball game. Thank you so much. Have a good night and see you next time. Bye! Oh, I really, really, really don't care about softball. Almost any game, so... I hope there won't be too many descriptions because, wow. Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard, despite their name. Mm. But yelling is fun. Yeah. Give it a shot, it's cathartic. Keep your eye on the ball! What's important is that you're having fun. What are you willing to sacrifice to win? Well, just keep your eye on the ball. Let's keep it soft. And also an eye on the bat. And the outfield, and the other players. Just keep your eye on all that stuff simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We watch a couple innings of softball. I have no idea of any of those terms. They're just completely strange to me. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig's trained his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Cake stand Craig is good with children. Wow. <laughs> It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off of the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, you have to let it go. Let what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up at bat. They hit a fly ball out into center field. The tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses her glove and it hits a straight in the forehead. Ooh. Ah. See, it's a completely justifiable fear. The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. 
Craig makes a beer link to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off on the field as she sobs. Man, it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once bike flipped off of a roof and into a pool while shot gunning a beer. We had different friends back then. He is so responsible now. The game resumes after the girls come down a bit and we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. Blah 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 blah. A batter on the other team blah blah blah. Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no, oh no 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 no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. I wish you could have just caught it with your hand or something. I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. Ah. <gasps> I uh, I caught the ball. You saved me. Oh my god, it would have been so painful on my head. But it must have been painful on her hand as well. Right? I caught the ball. Dad, I caught the ball. I think she completely worked on her fear and I think she might never be afraid of that ever again, which is cool. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fear, exactly. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. Go, girl. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as a girl lined up to shake hands. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, man. Oh. Thanks. I've been rocking hard all season. We've been rocking hard all season. And it's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of all my girls. Speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? No, we didn't. <clears throat> they look confident. Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. Mm. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twin, huh? So, which one of you is the evil one? <laughs> Hazel. Yeah, it's me. Good looking out. Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I would be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of her math tests. Test. And I usually throw rocks at stuff, and when people get mad, I'll tell them I'm um, Briar. What? Nice. We will talk about this later. Jelly, bro. I just got a couple more things to clean up, then we can hang up. Sounds good. Just then, one of the mom jumps into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team to get pizza. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know if I can... Nonsense! The girls won. What sort of celebration could we have without a fearless leader? She lays her hand on his shoulder and gives him goo-goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Amanda and I share a look. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright. Is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put out, but covers it up with a smile. Of course. Hmm. Where are we going? Thirsty's Pizza? What? Uh. What? It's a real place. An endless stream of girls clad in softball gear pile out of minivan and into a local pizza buffet, which is actually called Thirsty's Pizza. Amanda and I trail behind them with Craig. 
Reminds me of all the awful pizza we put into our bodies back in the day. Remember how we used to just fold whole pies in half and then put taco filling inside? Dang. Ha, pizza goes. I could never forget. <laughs> how did we survive college? Our bodies were younger back then, more elastic, more able to handle the toxic waste to put, we put inside of us. The good old days. The kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. My mother and I jump on a couple slices of mediocre pizza. Oh. Hey, give me a pizza. That. Oh. No, absolutely not. Haha, oh. -ha, I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Mm. Dad. A different mom walks up to us talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking after our kids. My daughter tells me every day about how great you are. Mm. Oh, I'm happy to look after them. Definitely helps that I have kids of my own. It's been so hard since Daniel left. I'm glad to know that my children have a strong male role model in their lives. Martha? Martha! What are you trying to do here? My dear Martha? Amanda and I look at each other again. Craig gets it from all angles. Hmm. Craig smiles sheepishly. Thank you so much, dude. Craig holds his fist up for fist bump from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. <clears throat> he looks super uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Let's create a diversion. I pull out the first thing that comes to mind. Who watched Long Haul Trucker last night? What? Callum and Flint visited a truck. They visited a truck stop that was also a cemetery and lead an exorcism of a ghost that was haunting the hot dog grill. I'm really into this, wow. I nudge Amanda for support. Hey. There was also a demon hunting one of the bathroom stalls and it kept throwing poops on the wall. Pretty scary stuff. Hmm? Actually, now that I think about it, there's a good chance there's a non-paranormal explanation for it. But still, Quality television. I haven't seen that. Hmm. I haven't seen that either. Wow, we have so much in common. Damn. She turns her back on me to talk to Craig. <laughs> so I'm taking Ale, Hazel, and Briar tonight for the sleepover? Hmm. Yep, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Oh, of course, but I could always use help watching after everyone tonight. If you're not doing anything... Wow, this lady is really going for the gold. Hey. Ha! It will actually be nice to have a night to myself in River, but thanks for the invite. Hmm, hmm Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing pizza into a coin slot. <gasps> Martha angrily turns her attention to one of her daughter. Tiffany, not another arcade machine. I swear if we have to buy it. Martha storms off towards her kid. Oh my god, it happened before. That's crazy. She seems nice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the team is one big weird family. Takes all sorts, right? Tiffany, don't eat the tokens. Oh. Tiffany is is a stellar hitter. Phew, I finally think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you a busy guy, huh? Oh. Only on days like today, I hope. Dad! Huh? Hey girls! Dad, can you help us beat our record on DDO? We told Arena's dad that you could destroy him on the dance mate. Please help! Hi. Girls, you know I don't have my jokes anymore. But dad... 
Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. I don't know. Sorry dudes, duty call. I promise we'll catch up in a bit. It's all good, buddy. Craig runs off with his daughters and I'm left alone with mine. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. I definitely wasn't like this in college. I feel like we might be a third wheel here. There's, there's worse places than an arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right, when I drop some coin pinball, you know it. Amanda and I pull up to a machine that's feeling pretty hot and get to work. I'm a little bit rusty, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. This could they have a good father-daughter moment, this is cute. And immediately she and immediately she gets multiball. Looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good. Aww. Don't patronize me. She was actually better than you. You can say it fully. Hey, just trying to pay a compli. Amanda shushes me. She's in her Z Zen zone. She fights valiantly, racking up points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just being able to watch. You're friends with Craig, right? Oh, that was Janet. Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Uh, yeah, we went to college together. Please don't lean on my thing. Huh? That's so interesting. So do you know if he's like available? Oh, this is weird. Oh, I honestly don't know if I could mm. say. Seriously, you're gonna make it tilt? Because it just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kid. Don't you think it would be great if he... Mm. Lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, a buzzer sounds and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine tilt. Hey. You stone happy. What? <gasps> I said, I have to go over there and now and put pizza in my mask so I don't say anything that hurt you feeling. Amanda. Nice. Bro, what's going on? Now is our change. Okay, it's like, I kind of want to go home right now. Like, this is like, I don't hang out with anybody. I mean, I'm kind of with my daughter, but... It's kind of a weird situation when all, I mean, a lot of mums hit on him and I'm like, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Now's our chance. So, if we don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda and say some quick goodbyes with Craig. We head out out of the pizza place. Finally. Thank God they left. Thank God. Amanda promises me that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. Hmm. Oh wow, hope you don't mind me bringing you back here bro. Oh actually we are... Is that over? Wow. Interesting. Not at all dude. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. River burps. <laughs> well, almost all to myself. <laughs> Hold up. Craig walks over to the truck of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. Oh. Uh, for some catch? This might be less catch and more you throwing the ball and me running after it, but sure. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. Oh. I have a cooler in my car that we could grab. But there's only juice boxes in there. Man, fatherhood is strange. Oh. You telling me. I cannot believe I'm looking back on my cakes and Craig days and reminiscing about it. Those were some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal cake stand. Oh. Right? It's something. It was a fit of discipline, bro. Trust me, I haven't properly hugged out with Craig in so long. I don't even know where to begin. 
Mm. I'm gonna ask about the business. Enough softball. I don't want to talk about softball anymore. So you run a business now? Hey. Yeah, we sell fitness gear. That's why fitness is all of its life. Makes sense. Import and export mostly, but we're coming up with our own line of athleisure wear soon. I nod. I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, you know, sweating. <laughs> Sounds like he had made a killing. Oh. If you ever need athletic gear, I've got you back. You could sponsor me, I'll rep your athleisure wear brand while I mow my lawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the glamorous lifestyle we're catering to. Yes. The kids. I can't believe you're father of three. Oh. Neither can I. You know me. I am an indecis indecisive person. You switched your major four times. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. But raising kids? When Briar and Hazel was born, it all finally made sense. It was like all the time I had spent trying to figure things out lead to them. I couldn't be happy about it. I don't think I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. Wow. Seems to be a very great dad, actually. Dang, though. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. It was the best thing to ever happen to me. It could be the only thing that ever happened to me, and I would still be proud of the life I, I lived. That's sweet. Okay, just softball. So, if softball caused the life you wanted, or was it the life that was thrust upon you? Oh. Ha! I'll admit that I was instant at first. Brian and Hazel had so much energy that we just had to get them into sports, but no one was there to run the team. The more I did it, the more I saw how much I meant it meant to all the girls. I'm Robin, there would be riot if I quit. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal butts. True. I... <coughs> they are quick and they work as a team. I've trained them too well. <laughs> they would take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. Hmm? Exactly. Mm. It's nice out there. Quiet. Must be good to get away from the softball mums for a bit, huh? I... Christ, Janet. Yeah, that was... a lot. Are they always like that? Oh. Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. Ix. <laughs> I'm just... so not interested. Well, what are you interested in? I don't know. Oh. Peace and quiet. That hot, hot silence. Hey. <laughs> wow, my ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on a Saturday. Hmm. But more seriously, I just cannot get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. Hmm. And I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger into my girls' lives. They've already been already been through so much I cannot put them through that buddy I hear you oh. so the moms can hit on me all they want but the girls are my top priority <clears throat> the right person will come along eventually I mean not necessarily he said that he wanted peace and he wasn't ready so let's not push anything you're doing a great job those Kids love you, and to add to that, the whole team loves you. I think you got this that thing is done right. Oh. Thanks, bro. Mm -hmm. That means a lot coming from you. While I'm distracted, I miss a softball and oof, it hits me right on the head. Wow, that hurts. Amanda was right all along. Sorry, dude. Craig runs over to oh. me. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. Craig spends a moment examining my head. Oh, no. It's it's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Hey. 
You would be so lucky. I mean, I feel like I've earned it at this point, waiting all day to hang out with you. Well, <gasps> Craig leans it and kisses my forehead. Wow. Oh. Walk it off, champ. Are the lights on this softball feel really hot, or is that just me? I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Mm. Hey, little buddy, you must be getting tired, huh? Mm. I had to say it, but I should probably head out. Sorry things are so... You get older and life just kind of gets in the way, huh? We start walking back to the parking lot. Hey, remember that one house party we went to that got broken up by a helicopter? Hey. How could I forget? You and me hopped over a concrete wall to get away. But the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops was parked. Hmm. Oh man, yeah. Could you imagine the look on our faces? We just walked straight past them like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they just started talking with us about how big of a bust it was. We had to talk with them for like 30 minutes. You told them you were interested in joining the academy. Hey. <laughs> and then they started giving me pointer for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, college. Hmm. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars. Craig pulled me into a hug. Or at least as much as we can manage with a baby between us. Oh. Never enough time, huh? Guess not. Oh. Let me make it up to you. Let's hang soon, yeah? I'd like that. I yawn as I walk through the door, spotting Amanda hunch over her collage, glue stick in hand. Well, first of all, it was a very cute date. It was very nice to get to know him, but like so much drama with the moms, it was crazy. But that was kind of, and the, the kiss on the forehead was so cute. It was cute, it was cute. So I'm going to stop here just in the middle of the collage because that's going to be another event. It's going to be about her probably like opening, opening up to really telling me what's happening. So that's going to be a full other episode, I think. So, wow, that was fun. I feel like this episode was, I mean, the first part was the more was strange. I didn't like it. The barbecue was great because we got to know everybody and the introduction of they, that book was very cool actually. I really like it. By the way, I wonder if I can just like... I guess I save it. But I wonder if I can just go to it directly. But I guess it's like... Maybe like tomorrow when I log in or something. But anyway. Thank you everyone for watching. I had so much fun. It was so cool. And as always, take care and see you soon. Bye!